Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at the overnight forecast. We're beginning to see some showers and storms ramping up, especially around 4 in the morning. So we're going to be weather aware before sunrise and right throughout your commute. So that's going to be a big deal. Now we'll talk more about that in detail coming up and why it's disruptive. We're going to see a lot of rain, especially in the early morning hours right along Interstate 85, pretty heavy at times. And even with a few rumbles of thunder, that'll increase the rate of rainfall, and we can expect some gusty winds with some of these storms. Look how it ramps up here for your Wednesday morning. That's the line we're looking at. And then another weekend storm. It doesn't mean it's all wet weather from here on out, but I can tell you this Saturday night to Sunday we'll be watching as well. You're watching WRBL News 3 on your side. Straight ahead, Georgia Republicans getting ready for a showdown at the ballot box as former President Donald Trump back David Perdue's campaign for governor. Next, COVID-19 put her in the hospital for over two months. Now an East Alabama woman is reflecting on her road to recovery. Plus, paratroopers take holiday cheer to new heights as the annual toy drop returns to Fort Benning. News 3 Evening Edition starts right now. On your side, this is News 3 Evening Edition. Good evening and thank you for trusting News 3. I'm Phil Scoggins. And I'm Teresa Whitaker. Former Senator David Perdue's decision to challenge Governor Brian Kemp in the gubernatorial primary is highlighting a divide among Georgia Republicans. News 3's Chuck Williams here now to tell us the impact this could have on grassroots Republicans. Chuck? Phil, Teresa, Georgia Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan puts the race in perspective and it could be a harsh reality for the Georgia GOP. Jeff Duncan was a professional baseball player long before he became a politician. And here's how he describes the Brian Kemp, David Perdue primary. The Braves play in the Mets, and it would be like the Braves in a fist fight in the lock, locker room or in the dugout right before the first pitch is thrown, right? That would be what I equate this to. And you, you're showing the whole stadium, you're showing the other team that you can't play on the same, you can't be on the same page. And it comes with fallout. And it's brutal. It gives the other side more energy. It gives, uh, you know, it, it, the, and then you got the other teammates that are confused as to which side to take. Just ask Muskogee County Republican Party Chairman Alton Russell where he stands on Purdue Kemp. Who will you support? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm going to support the nominee after the primary. Who will you vote for in the primary? Oh, I'm not, I can't tell you that. Man, I'm not going to take a position on that. That wouldn't be, you know, get me in trouble. Yeah. Russell is like a lot of grassroots Republicans. They've been key players on Team Kemp and Team Purdue. But Duncan says a complicating factor is the Republicans select an opponent for the likely Democratic nominee Stacey Abrams. The Kemp-Purdue friction is manufactured. If you line up all the people that would day one say they, they support Governor Kemp and all the people, all the Republicans that say they support David Purdue, and you line them up and you say, let's take a test as to how, wh where you stand on the policies. Almost everybody agrees. The underlying rub is former President Donald Trump. Purdue is backed by Trump. Kemp, because he followed Georgia law in the wake of the 2020 election, is in Trump's political crosshairs. It's, it's, it's synthetic. It's the one issue to divide. And that's exactly what's happening, is it's dividing good people, good Republicans, good conservatives. Phil, Teresa, the baseball analogy is an interesting one. I guess the lieutenant governor is calling Stacey Abrams and the Democrats the Mets. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Chuck. The Republican primary will be decided on May 24th. The general election is November 8th. Troop County has named a new county commissioner to represent District 5 following the death of longtime commissioner Richard English, who held that seat for over 40 years. Dr. Jimmy McCamey, Jr. was sworn in last week to represent District 5, which covers central Troop County. He is a LaGrange native with career experience in education and social work. McCamey says his main priorities will be expanding affordable housing and improving conditions at the Troop County Jail, concerns he says were echoed by voters throughout his campaign. My thoughts are it's time to go to work. And so people voice their opinion uh, during the campaign as well as during the election. And so to be able to win five out of the six precincts that means people really heard my message. And so I have to get to work and I have to deliver at this point. 
Patrick Cruz, the chairman of the Troop County Board of Commissioners, says he's excited to work with Dr. McCamey and welcomes a new perspective on the board. Taking you to East Alabama now, where a Lee County mother is regaining her ability to walk and breathe after spending 88 days in the hospital. She spoke to News 3's Elizabeth White about her long road to recovery. 44 year old Jennifer Ox is a loving wife, mother of three boys, grandmother, and now COVID 19 survivor. She's the toughest person I know, strongest person I know. Ox got sick July 3rd. A week later, she was in EAMC's ICU. I remember going, having horrible trouble breathing. I couldn't breathe at all. And um, I do remember FaceTiming with my kids right before I went on the ventilator. Sedated for two weeks, Ox then spent another 55 days on the vent, followed by inpatient rehab. I couldn't move. I couldn't move my legs. I couldn't scratch my face. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. There was, the muscle was completely, all of her muscle was completely gone. I came home October 1st and had to go back in a week later because I did have clots in my lungs. And so I had to go through that procedure to have those removed. With each setback, Faith, family, her medical and physical therapy team kept her going. Ox can now stand and move using a walker. Praise uh, the nurses uh, in the ICU at, at East Alabama. Yeah. Um, above and beyond every single one of them. The couple was not vaccinated and remained unsure about getting it. I want to talk to my primary care doctor. I want to follow up with my uh, pulmonologist and see what they think. And, um, and go from there. We just really aren't sure. What is solid is the love this family shares and their desire Ox's recovery will provide hope to others. Reporting in Lee County, Elizabeth White, WRBL News 3, on your side. As we head into the break, we want to thank you again for trusting News 3. Coming up, paratroopers drop into Fort Benning with holiday gifts in tow. But first, Bob keeping an eye on the conditions outside. Yeah, it's nice to see that. We look at the uh, midnight hour, the rain starts to ramp up, northwest Interstate 85, and it's just going to be a wet commute. So how did it end up today? Today was okay, like a little reprieve, right? Well, that's it. But we're going to add more rain in the precipitation gauge. That's the rain gauge, in other words. That's all coming up after the break. News 3 is on your side with Teresa Whitaker, Phil Scoggins, Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald, and sports with Ray.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 Evening Edition. Hundreds of paratroopers dropped into Fort Benning today, ready to brighten the holiday season for families in need. It's the return of Operation Toy Drop, an annual campaign putting trees under the Christmas tree for kids across the valley. News 3's Kenzie Beach has the story. 304 paratroopers jumped, each bringing a toy, and in return were awarded international jump wings. Families gathered on Fort Benning to watch as parachutes filled the sky. Participants included members from the Australian and Canadian Army. After two years at Fort Benning, Australian Army Sergeant Major Joel McMone completed his last assignment in final static line jump today for a greater purpose. And getting to represent the country in such an important day like today to help those underprivileged children is uh, a real honor. Soldiers say events like this help better bridge the gap between military and civilians and reminds them there is always something bigger about what they do in the U.S. Army. Right, Christmas. You know, it's always a good day when kids can wake up with something underneath the Christmas tree, and something to be happy about, and really be thankful that there's folks around in the area. Through the event, the Army donated 500 toys that will go to Santa's Castle on Post and the Salvation Army. Reporting from Fort Benning, Kenzie Beach, WRBL News 3, on your side. And you're watching News 3 Evening Edition. More news straight ahead. But first, here's a look at what you can expect tonight on News Nation. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live on News Nation. Can't you support vaccines, not hate Anthony Fauci, and also believe the administration's COVID regulations don't make a lot of sense right now? Now here's Ashley with a look at Banfield. Thanks, Dan. Tonight on Banfield, supermodel Paulina Poroskova weighs in on the Brooke Shields interview with Barbara Walters and how much has changed since they were both teen models. Plus, Merry Christmas, you're fired. How one boss laid off hundreds of people on Zoom after calling them lazy. That's tonight on Banfield on News Nation. You can watch News Nation in prime time each night starting at 8 Eastern. Take a look at your screen to find out where News Nation's television provider is on in your area. Right now, we are back in three minutes. Hurt by a big truck? 1 800 call Ken. One call, that's all.
on your side. Chief Meteorologist Bob Jeswald has your first alert forecast. Showers are kind of scattered about the real light, so this is nothing uh, major, but they will ramp up as we get over uh, the hump here. And the hump is midnight. Let's just stop it here. We get around the midnight hour, it really starts to increase in intensity, especially up in north portions of Georgia. You got a higher terrain there, and when you get that kind of energy coming in, it kind of helps lift it a little bit. So the dynamics here will be a lot of rain. If you're headed up this way, it's going to be a wet, wet overnight forecast. Watch what happens when we stop it here around 4 30 Central, 5 30 Eastern. Now we got that energy just kind of lying right through here. To the south of this, there's actually a front drape. You can almost envision it, right? And with that, everything rides along that. So the intensity of the showers, a few embedded thunderstorms start to really roll in here. And some of them will be torrential rain briefly at times with some gusty winds. So when you're traveling like this, you know how that morning commute could be. Let me stop it here. The morning commute comes all the way through even the real heavily populated areas outside of Auburn. It clears around 9 30, 8 30 central, but just south of Smith Station now coming through Columbus at this point. And then it's clearing out nicely. Hey, it'll be nice. So touchdown weather in the afternoon. So Wednesday afternoon is great. Very nice here. Even through Thursday. Let me stop it here. Thursday morning looks good. We're going to see a little bit more cloud covers. Cover, excuse me, and the rain in, uh, showers start to decrease momentarily before they return with another advancing storm system that is much stronger. Temperatures in advance of this are going to warm into the upper 70s. Just want to let you know. So, coming out of the Rockies, this storm system starts to go into a whole new phase of really ramping up. Good snowstorm up in parts of the northern Rockies. To the south of it, even the Rockies across New Mexico, around Carlsbad, the areas around there, and then south slicing down on that is the shower. So, that storm comes through here. This weekend, it sets up for severe weather across the southeast region. Now, could it be more early on Saturday through central, north central Alabama? Yes, it could be. By the time it gets here, the concern will be the heavy rain and then some strong winds and how well it holds up. If it times in the afternoon here, yeah, I don't like that too much. So we could be looking at some damaging wind, maybe some isolated tornadoes. So that'll, that'll be the case. Storm Prediction Center has nothing about this, but the setup is there, and that's what the First Alert Weather Team does. We're the most experienced team. We lead, they follow. So we look at temperatures in an inch and a half region, almost close to two inches, up in these areas having numerous amounts of showers repeating over the same areas. You see how that shapes up. And the lows overnight tonight, we're going to see those 50 degree readings, chilly upper 40s in our northern counties. Perhaps even some upper 60s. That's where that front lies. You can see exactly where it is. So that again reinforces why we're going to see that rain riding right along that track. That'll be the essential track right there, and that's why we're watching this in the day planner. So a very wet commute, as we just said, and we may even see a couple embedded thunderstorms. Just wet, unsettled weather for early morning commute does not do well. It's unsettling, and since it's unsettling, it's weather aware in the morning. The afternoon is great. The rest of Wednesday, great. Looking good for our holiday heroes and everything else. Okay, Thursday, great. Friday, pretty good. A few showers maybe, but that's it. Saturday afternoon, we're weather aware because of the, look at these temperatures, 78, the aggressive nature of that storm could really cook things up here. Just want you to be on top of the game, and we'll keep you posted here. Phil and Teresa. Okay, thank you, Bob. Coming up in sports, the Auburn Tigers football season isn't over just yet. Auburn is going bowling this season, and fans won't have to travel too far. That's right, y'all. One last chance for the Tigers to end the season on a high note. Coming up after the break, we'll talk about Auburn's trip to the Birmingham Bowl. The Tigers will square off against the team from the Lone Star State. That's coming up next.
on your side. Sports Director Rex Castillo and WRBL News 3 Sports. Auburn fans, the football season isn't over just yet. The Tigers are going bowling, and they're staying in the Yellowhammer State for this game. Auburn is heading to the Birmingham Bowl. The Tigers will square off against the University of Houston. The 20th-ranked Cougars went 11-2 this season. Their only losses were against Texas Tech and the Cincinnati Bearcats, who are the first Group of Five team in the college football playoff this year. Now, the experts have Auburn as a two-and-a-half-point favorite over the Cougars. An interesting key to this game will be the ground attack. In both of Houston's losses, the Cougars gave up over 100 rush yards and Auburn's Tank Bigsby well happens to be one of the most dangerous running backs in the country. The Birmingham Bowl goes down on Tuesday, December 28th. The 20th episode of the On Your Sidelines podcast tipped off this afternoon and we welcome one of the faces of Georgia high school basketball coverage, Kyle Sandy. Sandy is the founder of the website sandyspiel.com. Here, Sandy gives in-depth coverage of high school basketball all over the Peach State. Sandy played his high school ball at Sequoia High School, and during his time on the hardwood, he noticed there wasn't a ton of coverage or exposure for great high school players in general in Georgia. After all, football does dominate headlines in the South. Kyle made it his mission to change that. He travels all over Georgia providing independent coverage for high school games, and on our podcast, he talked about what it's like covering games even in small towns. Nothing beats small town basketball when it's, you know, two good teams going at it and the community is involved. That is what high school athletics is all about. And it, it, it does give me chills. When it's a big game, it does give me chills. And my eyes do get water, even though I haven't played in an atmosphere like that in forever and ever and ever. If I ever have played in an atmosphere that big, it's a super special moment for me. And I can only imagine how big it is for the student athletes involved. Check out the full show right now on WRBL.com under the podcast tab and click on your sidelines. I tell you guys, Kyle's motivation to do so well is truly inspiring. That'll do it for sports, but stick around. There's more news for you coming up right after this.
on your side. You're watching WRBL News 3 Evening Edition. Before we go, a reminder, a digital exclusive show continues tonight on WRBL.com. Tonight on the Chuck Williams Show, we'll hear from three Columbus State University students as they share what they've learned after shadowing Chuck this semester. You can watch them streaming tonight at 7, 6 central on WRBL.com. And a quick correction, we told you earlier Pastor David Stallion was Chuck's guest tonight. He will actually join Chuck for a conversation on News 3 Sunday morning at 8, 7 central. All right, Bob, joining us now with a final look at our forecast as we mm -hmm. are weather aware. That's right. Unsettled weather, a lot of heavy rain in the morning. It times out with the morning commute. No one wants that, right? So it's allowing enough time tomorrow. That's really what that's about. Saturday's got a little bit more different makeup, which means we could see some damaging wind, maybe even the likelihood of a setup for tornadoes. We've got those upper 70s Saturday, and again, we got to watch when that times out. So the weekend one is going to be uh, important too. That's why we're weather aware too. Just want to make you aware of these two days. What could it certainly impact you and your travel and being outdoors? Other than that, we're doing okay. And next week, we'll kick off with a real dry forecast for several days after that. All right. Thanks so much, Bob. And we thank you for watching News 3 Evening Edition. Have a safe and pleasant evening, everyone.